Just recently, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, we received reports that there is a staff member who's working for a Republican on this committee who has ties with and supports a white nationalist who has proclaimed himself to be just like Hitler. Wow, uh, last I checked, that wasn't something we wanted in our government. Uh, but that was Democratic Representative Jasmine Crockett of Texas calling out her colleagues for employing neo Nazis. And this happened during the GOP's led House Homeland Security Committee yesterday, which was on countering left wing violence, mind you. Well, what colleague was Crockett talking about? We'll go to the independent. An alleged white nationalist who pledged his loyalty to Nick Fuentes has reportedly been working for US Representative Paul Gosar for nearly two years. Social media accounts, photographs, and posts on far right platforms and other websites uncovered by Talking Points Memo and researchers who study far right movements have connected congressional staffer Wade Searly to accounts belonging to a prominent and prolific Fuentes accolade. Now, here are the pictures of Wade Searly. Yep, there he is with Representative Gosar and also with Nick Fuentes. And if you're wondering about that loyalty pledge that Searly apparently took, here's the backstory, also per Talking Points memo. On May 6, two high ranking members of Fuentes' white supremacist, Graper, Movement had defected from his organization and gone on a viral far right streaming show to criticize Fuentes and air their grievances about the group. Fuentes responded five days later on his own stream, America First. After denouncing his enemies, Fuentes raised his right hand and made a demand from his remaining followers. Now it's time to pledge your allegiance to me forever, okay? Raise your right hand, I swear my undying allegiance to Nicholas J. Fuentes and the America First Movement, so help me God. I swear I will defend the white race, my nation America, and my savior Jesus Christ, and my loyalty to the America First Movement. Nicholas J. Fuentes, so help me God. Wow. Okay, that, that's, I don't know what to say. Uh, but I know that critics have called for Gosar to be removed from the Homeland Security Committee, even though he kind of should be removed from Congress, but maybe I'm asking too much. Uh, well, the Independent said this. Kyle Herrig, Executive Director of Activist Watch Group, Activist Watchdog Group, the Congressional Integrity Project, has also called the committee's chair, James Comer, to remove Mr. Gosar and demand that Mr. Gosar fire Mr. Searley. Now, Herrick said this in a statement, the American people deserve better than to have white supremacists running around the halls of Congress as members and staffers. If James Comer had a single ounce of integrity or credibility in his body, he would demand Representative Gosar file, fire his staffer and remove Gosar from his committee. Um, yeah, it's funny because I think we know that white supremacists have been very much the foundation of all major kind of entities throughout our society, whether it's policing. Um, or other sectors of any kind of social responsibility in government. So I, as far as I'm concerned, at least the gentleman is out and proud about it to a certain extent on public forums because it's a lot easier than where they're wearing their clan hoods uh, pretending to be ghosts. So hey, I don't know what to say, but this is exactly par for course uh, in terms of uh, empowering these people who we know are either Nazi sympathizers, Nazi adjacent, or just all out little grand dragons, Jessica. Who ends up hiring people who are white supremacists and Nazis? Probably people who can look past the idea that their staff would be a white supremacist or a Nazi. Either that or you are a white supremacist or a Nazi yourself. It's not that difficult to come to this conclusion. If we know about this and we know about Mr. Seal's views, guarantee the chief of staff at Gosar's office knows about his views. Guaranteed Gosar also knows about the views as well. I don't think you end up working in a congressional office for that long without this stuff coming up. You talk about politics on a day to day basis. Yeah, I get he's probably not hired to express his opinion. And I understand that people say diversity of opinion is valuable. I would draw the line at white supremacy and fascism. And I think many people would find that entirely reasonable. And countries like Germany that have learned the hard way of what happens when you have a rise of fascism in a country, now they are very stringent about anyone in a position of power 
holding white supremacist or fascist views. They will disband entire police forces if they found if they find like they did a group text of folks sympathizing with Hitler. And so the idea that we need to protect freedom of speech or allow people to have their own personal political opinions, fine. They should be far away from any public office in the United States. People who hold these views shouldn't be bureaucrats, they shouldn't work in congressional offices. They should be fired for being Nazis and for some reason people treat Treat that like it's a hot take. It's really not. No, I would say it's not a hot take either. Like, um, it's kind of like what I would expect you not to be. But it's crazy to me. Like, how did he pass background? That's my question. Like, you have the FBI and the feds investigating you so you can have federal employment. And they're just like, oh, well, hey, here he is at a white sheet sale at Kohl's. I'm sure it's fine. Like, you have all the documentation there possible. So, why are you still allowing this person to have access to our government? Especially after that whole January 6th thing. And it's Especially given all that you know about white nationalists and how they are a threat to our country. So I, I kind of I want to talk to management. What is it like the Office of Administrative Personnel or something like that? They're a problem.